BestBookBits.com presents The Money Mentor by Graham Holm. Learn how to pay off your mortgage in as little as seven years without becoming a hermit. Graham Holm is Australia's original money mentor, educating and coaching families how they can reduce debt rapidly to create risk-free wealth on existing assets held and how to grow their existing asset base to new heights. After a successful banking career of almost 10 years, Graham co-founded and established the multi-award winning Infinity Group Australia in 2013. Now one of the most highly recognized mortgage brokerage and financial coaching firms in Australia, awarded 2019 Finance Broker of the Year and the Mortgage Industry Rising Star in Australia, Graham has a genuine passion for the financial success of everyday Australians. The book outlines how to pay off your mortgage sooner, reduce interest, control spending, build wealth, and invest in property while cutting through the myths and bullshit the banks have fed you your entire life. Get ready to learn how to pay off your mortgage and build wealth fast. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of The Money Mentor. Graham helps ordinary mum and dads burdened with stranded 30-year home loans pay off those loans within 7 to 10 years. Paying your home loan off over 30 years is bullshit. It's the biggest ripoff. When you're sitting in your bank, arranging your home loan, their entire focus is on the minimum monthly repayment. That just means they're forecasting their juicy profits over a 30-year period. Our aim is to disrupt the passive, inherited way of thinking encouraged by the banks and to completely change traditional mum and dad psychology. People can lie, but numbers cannot. Many of us accept what our parents have taught us. Money is hard to come by. We must work hard, struggle, scrimp and save. This is embedded in our subconscious mind, creating the belief that acquiring wealth is difficult. Further, many of us are raised to believe wealth is acquired by many not deserving it, or via unethical or selfish means. All these childhood beliefs are invalid. We must accept this as correct. We expect to struggle, hence our mind creates our reality. This needs to change because we all have the opportunity to succeed. Reduce debt to create wealth, then protect it. All money goes directly into the loan account itself. Then we schedule a weekly budget payment over to the offset account. This means the only amount of money sitting in mum and dad's hot little hand with the tap of a debit card is a weekly budget of $750 a week, for example. That budget covers your discretionary spend, including your petrol, your groceries, transport card, your coffee and lunch, takeaway meals, tickets to the movies, and anything of that nature. Everything else is in the home loan account, and we simply pay all our bills out of the home loan account. Money stays in the home loan account for as long as possible before being used to pay bills, reducing the interest payable on a daily basis. Reducing interest payments. What makes this so powerful is that most bank loans are only getting about $8,000 to $10,000 of the principal of the home loan each year over the first few years. The first 10 to 15 years of a home loan serviced by minimum payments is all front end loaded, essentially paying them more in interest than in recycling the principal amount. On average, you'll only reduce the original loan by about $50,000 to $100,000 in that period. Minimum payments means the debt reduction all comes off at the back end as the graph drops off towards the end of the standard 30-year mortgage. Our method attacks that front end, loading, when the potential interest payable is at its highest. We aim to actually pay as little interest as possible. That strategy is one of the key elements to our approach to saving money. Controlling discretionary spending. Take a look and compare the two images. The first one is a disgusting bank loan, which shows you the first five years of a $500,000 mortgage with paying the bare minimum repayments. Compare this to the way Infinity does it by upping the total monthly repayment from $2,500 to up to $6,000, you will see the massive reduction of the principal repaid versus as little as interest paid in the first five years. The Great Australian default is that we all have a spreadsheet that tells us what our budget should look like, and we know roughly what we spend on groceries, petrol, mortgage, and car loans, but the discretionary spending is just out of control. Spend what you need, pay off your debt, and invest the rest to create wealth. Paying off any mortgage with the only minimum payments each month makes you the bank's pawn. Making additional payments monthly to save interest pays off your mortgage faster, leaving you with more money to invest. Taking this important first step creates a feeling of self-confidence towards financial independence. 
The more bank accounts that you have open, the less money is in your mortgage and reducing daily interest charges. The more interest you pay, the bigger the bank's profits. They're in it to make money. All those little accounts you have opened are earning you 2%. Meanwhile, the exact same money could have been put on your mortgage and save you 5%. You'd be better 3% off in simple terms. Though it's actually even better than that. The plain fact is that we truly only need two accounts. Number one, a fully transactional home loan account. And number two, day-to-day -day bank account, which needs to be fully transactional online and 100% offsets your home loan. Industry myths and bullshit. People are more likely to get divorced than change banks. Get a better plan, not a cheaper product. Get a better plan, not a cheaper product. Looking at the results summary over scenario one versus scenario two, a typical person with 30 years home loan paying the minimum repayment of $2,176 versus scenario two, having a home loan of 10 years and paying $5,500 a month will save you a massive $100,000 in interest paid. Banks will never randomly call you to offer you a better deal for no reason. You have to force it or negotiate it yourself. Budgeting basics. A budget is a plan prepared in advance that, if adhered to, will leave you in a better place financially at the end than when you started. Budgeting properly gives you every single incoming dollar a purpose. You'll know exactly where it's all going. Hopefully more of it will be going on debt reduction than it has been the case previously. Interest earned versus interest saved. You've got your home loan, you're paying X interest. You've got a couple, a few credit cards, you're paying Y and Z interest. You've got some saving accounts, you're earning M interest. Card A gets paid from account one, card B from account two, etc. If I draw a line between the cards and the accounts, look how quickly it gets very messy indeed. How do you ever keep track of all that and make sense of it? You probably don't. Things get missed, stuff doesn't get paid properly, you need extra money one month, do debt increases instead of reducing. $11,000 average monthly net salary, how most families are currently banking. Have a look at all the accounts from the everyday account, bills, savings, holidays, credit card one, credit card two, car loan and personal loans. You'll see money moving everywhere. It's better to have a single, fully transactional home loan account which accepts direct deposits and direct salary credits in. The not so secret secret. Having two accounts and having the offset and weekly budget account. What do we need to live each week? Simplify your structure. Establish what you need as a family as a weekly discretionary spending budget. This allows us to implement the not so secret secret. Interest on your home loan is calculated daily and charged monthly. Interest on your home loan is calculated daily and charged monthly. What does that mean in practical terms? $100 invested at 2%. $2 interest earned over the 12 month period. $102 is what you end up with before tax. 60 cents tax deducted. $101.40 is what you actually end up with after tax. That simple, practical demonstration of interest earned. Interest saved, yeah baby, the good stuff. Interest saved on the other hand is completely different beast. So let's now examine the totally different effect of interest saved. Let's say you take the same $100, instead of putting it into a bank account, we put that into a home loan account. A home loan on which we're being charged 4.29% interest. That would mean our $100 would earn $4.29 simply by not outing it into a bank account, but instead putting it into our home loan. Even better, not only do you save at a higher interest rate, but because it's not taxed, you get to keep 100% of the saving. Ask yourself this simple question. Would you prefer to have multiple savings accounts and give the government 60 cents out of every two dollars that you earn in interest for a net gain of a dollar 40 cents or would you rather save four dollars and 29 cents one dollar 40 or four dollars 29 for the same hundred dollars the answer to that is clearly a no-brainer based on that straightforward demonstration you see that you don't actually need multiple bank accounts to get ahead what you need is a fully transactional mortgage and what's called an offset account. Discretionary spending, the not so secret secret. Averaged out, the total spending of all those things combined amounts to around $750 per week. $250 for groceries, $100 for transport, $80 for lunch and coffee, 
50 bucks on alcohol, and $320 for other things like entertainment, takeaway food, dining out, etc. $750. Establishing a, a typical budget, discretionary spending. Weekly budget accounts for the groceries, the fuel and transport, lunch and coffees, alcohol, and the miscellaneous entertainment. $3,000 per month or $750 per week. The average family has somewhere between $1,800 and $2,200 of bills each month. That amount doesn't include things like daycare or childcare cost, private education cost, or what we call extracurricular activities that they do each month. Let's look at the bills you pay. Discretionary spending habits. $11,000 average monthly net salary gets broken down to $3,000 per month into the weekly budget account. $2,500 per month for bills and the amount remaining is $5,500. This amount pays down the principal mortgage balance every single month. Multiplying $5,500 by 12 months of the year, we are creating a scenario akin to not having to pay interest on $66,000 of your mortgage effectively reducing the amount outstanding by $66,000 as opposed to $8,500 that we're going to reduce following the process that most Australians adopt with their 25 or 30 year mortgages. Compare the pair. A. Reducing the outstanding principal on your mortgage by $8,500 per year or B. Reduce the outstanding principal on your mortgage by $66,000 per year. I know what you're thinking, what about interest? A typical mortgage holder using our example numbers would be charged $21,450 in interest in any given year on the amount outstanding. Would you prefer to reduce the outstanding principal on your mortgage by $44,500 or $8,500 a year? The ultimate question, which would you prefer? Reduce your outstanding principal on your mortgage by $44,500 per year or reduce the outstanding principal on your mortgage by $8,500 per year? Your next question could be, where on earth is that $44,500 going at this moment? Looking at the typical mortgage loan balance of half a million dollars at an interest rate of 4.29%, the monthly repayment is two and a half grand with the annual repayments of $30,000 per year. Interest repayments, $21,500, leaves you a daily interest repayment of $58 rounded. Where we want to be. Our clients only pay $117,000 in interest over a 10-year term versus bank customers without strategy who stay on the 30-year term pay $396,000 in interest. If we look at the 30-year loan graph showing how the amount outstanding will reduce over the period of 30 years. As I've explained earlier, interest in a home loan is calculated daily and charged monthly. So to reduce those daily interest calculations and monthly charges, let's say we put the whole $11,000 of income into the mortgage. We want to withdraw $750 each week of the month. That's $750 in week one and another $750 in week two, a further $750 in week three, and a final $750 in week four. All up, we're withdrawing over $3,000 over the course of a month. On top of that, we want to pay all our bills out of the home loan by direct debit. Repeat the $750 process over and over again, week by week, month by month, with interest being charged daily. Now recall, we talked about taking $10 or $20 a day off the $58 a day interest we're paying. Can you see by this graph where the $10 to $20 a day saving is going to come from? Can you also see that we follow this new trajectory through the balance of our term of our home loan right up until we're paid off? We're going to save hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest on our home loan. We're effectively reducing the term of our home loan from 25 to 30 years down to between seven and 10 years. Can you imagine how different your life could be if you were able to wipe out your mortgage in seven to 10 years? What would you do with the extra money available to you? Shares versus property. The last 100 years, the two lines are practically even. Long-term asset class returns. Value of $100 invested in 1926 you will see Australian shares versus Australian residential property over the years versus the Australian cash rate at 5.7 per annum versus 11.1 and 11.3%. Most average people are comfortable with bricks and mortar. Shares just seem too volatile, too unpredictable for the average person. A new president gets elected in America and shares plummet. What happens if you need cash in that day? 
Not many lay people get wealthy through shares other than by accident. Making money from shares usually takes knowledge and experience, both of which often come by getting your fingers burnt once or twice, and your average punter is risk adverse. You want to retire at 67? Well, the share market will be whatever it will be. Could be going gangbusters, could be in a slump. You roll the dice and take your chances. Property, on the other hand, practically everyone is comfortable with. We've all lived in a property for our whole lives. We understand paying rent or dragging a mortgage behind us. We understand associated expenses. We understand building needs maintenance. The numbers involved are familiar to us. We've grown up in the middle of property prices going up and sometimes going down. It's not scary to the average person. They have a good grasp that, as they pay down the mortgage bit by bit, they actually own their property bit by bit. The secret is paying off bigger bits faster. The wealthiest people in Australia all have significant property portfolios that have been held for a significant period of time. Shares, property, or any other form of investment must be held with a long-term view as the magical, mystical word that all investors need to be aware of is time. Investing in property. Building an investment in Sydney or Melbourne metro areas isn't necessarily the best way to start your portfolio. It is a very high entry price and very low rental return. Why buy a $1 million two-bedroom apartment in Sydney Metro Fringe with its equally high strata fees when you can buy two sub half a million dollar houses in other markets that will most likely rent for $450 to $500 per week? Compare the pair. A million dollars of debt at 4.5% is going to cost you $45,000 each year in interest. That's approximately $865 per week in interest only. If you're renting a property like that, it would cost you between $500 to $700 per week. However, as an investor, it is costing you $865 less the rent of $500 to $700 per week. Example, number one, Sydney Metro $1 million purchase price with an annual rent of $26,000 to $36,400. A 2.6% 3.64% per annum return with an annual interest expense of $45,000 at 4.5% per annum. Example number two, two four-bedroom houses at half a million dollars each renting at $450 per week, minimum, million-dollar purchase price with annual rent of $46,800, uh, 4.68% per annum return with an annual interest expense of $45,000 at 4.5% per annum. Buy property for sure, but rent it out. Earn income from it, earn capital growth from it, use its growth to buy more property and keep the cycle going. Meanwhile, rent where you want to live, you'll pay less to rent a good property in a better area than you can afford to buy in. You'll never have to worry about maintenance or selling the place at a later date. All the while you're renting in your favorite suburb, your investment properties are with a bit of strategy, planning and luck, growing in value and bringing you a steady stream of income. Mortgage insurance, LMI, lender's mortgage insurance. It does what it says it does, protects the lender, not you. The lender is protecting their investment of money because you had less than 20% deposit. They consider you a high risk. Will the rent and tax benefits cover the loan repayments? Better still, will the income and deductions cover the loan repayment and a small surplus of cash flow to be left to reduce debt somewhat? Research tells us that financial problems are the main cause of marital and relationship breakdown. Often the reason is due to partners not understanding what their financial responsibilities are, the way to obtain a better financial outcome, what actions to take and what to avoid, and again, how to do it. We encourage property investors to invest in a range of markets so they are covered if anything happens to any one single market. Risk Mitigation 101. Understanding where your money goes is part of that process. Will you still want to spend cash on the pack of smokes or the red bull at the petrol station once you know that interest on your home loan is calculated daily? Money left in your home loan account is money saved on a reduced daily interest payment. It's that simple. Make your own lunch. That's money saved. Easily. And you can see it at the end of each month in your miraculously lower interest payments. Not only are your interest payments going down, but you're actually owning more of your home. Brick by brick, month by month. It is a nice little repetitive cycle. The more you own, the less you owe, meaning ever decreasing interest payments and more coming off your mortgage. Until suddenly quicker than you thought possible, no mortgage, no debt, no interest payments. Your home 
is a wholly owned asset, an asset which can be used to buy other properties and generate an income stream to build wealth. Ask yourself, if you have the commitment to forego a little, not all, of an instant fix in order to invest in yourself and that delayed gratification, all it takes is a series of small incremental changes to your current lifestyle that you can get comfortable with and build on bit by bit. Financial security. What does financial security look like to the average Australian? To anyone reading this book, whether you decide the information is here is for you or not, you would probably argue that a roof over your head with no mortgage or rental payments due would fit the description of financial security. When all that's left to pay for is the standard utilities and your food, it's fair to say you're secure financially. Please take control of the family discretionary spending budget today and start reducing debt. It is surely the simplest and easiest risk-free way of creating wealth. Just smash down that home loan. Modern bank account. Our modern home loan account is bank account. Your bank account. It does everything. It must be set up so that we have direct salary and other credits going directly to the home loan. Salary and other credits are thereby instantly reducing the amount of money borrowed, even if it's only temporarily, and reducing the amount owned means a reduced amount of interest to be paid. We build in a free unlimited redraw facility and set up direct debits for all your regular home bills, e.g. utilities, interest, foxtail, etc. Home loan interest is calculated daily and charged monthly. Therefore, the more times we reduce the actual balance and the longer we leave funds in the home loan, the better the outcome is for us. If we're sitting our funds in a savings account, particularly if this account is not offset, we are not making any inroads into the daily interest cost of our home loan, even if, for example, we are making payments fortnightly. Remember, this is a fully transactional home loan account with all the bells and whistles. We all trade time for money in our jobs, however, it is what we do with that net income that we trade our time for week in, week out, that counts. We need to wisely invest that money to create passive income to fund our desires lifestyle in years to come. Traditional mortgage graph recap. Have a look at the 30-year mortgage that most people are on versus where we want to be. Shorten that debt down to 7 to 10 years. The first thing you need to understand when you are seeking to pay off debt fast is to learn about how the banks or your lenders make their money. Let's work through a straightforward real-life example to demonstrate how a mortgage is structured to the bank's advantage and what you should do to turn that around to be structured to your advantage. Fred and Mary have taken out a half a million dollar mortgage on a typical 30-year term. If we look at the first 15 years of their mortgage, we can see that after 15 years of working and paying their mortgage, the outstanding balance is still $400,000. Therefore, in that first 15 years, they've only paid off $100,000. The reason is that simple. The banks front end loaded all the interest and fee charges into the first 14 or 15 years of the loan, at a potential slap in the face. Typically every four to five years, most people refinance their loan to borrow more money. Maybe it's to consolidate debt, renovate, go on a holiday, or whatever their worthwhile purpose might be. Regardless of the purpose, the banks take advantage of this refinancing because in effect, when you do this, it puts you back at square one again. It's sort of like resetting that 30-year term. Does that make sense and sink in? Using current relatively low interest rates, anyone borrowing half a million dollars over 30 years will end up paying $396,000 in interest, meaning they borrow $500,000 and end up paying a whopping $896,000 back to the lender. When you hear about some of the big banks posting their billion-dollar profits, this is how they are doing it. This is how... They are making their money from people just like you. Of course, no lender will lend you money for free. However, in this case, you can see that instead of paying $396,000 in interest, our strategy sees our clients only paying $117,000 in interest. That's around $279,000 of savings going straight into our clients' pockets. That's like getting money for free. If you can pay off the mortgage faster, you have more time to leverage the money you earn to end up in a better place. For more information and if you need a money mentor, reach out to Graham Home himself at help at moneymentor.com.au. That's help at moneymentor.com.au. 
Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this. Check out our YouTube channel, bestbookbits.com, for over 500 video book summaries uploaded previously. If you're into the audio and written book summary, check out our website, bestbookbits.com. In book categories, everything from biographies, business and marketing, money, personal development, real estate, relationships, success. If you're into the audio podcast version, check out mixcloud.com forward slash bestbookbits. Follow us on Instagram for daily motivational quotes and book summaries. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this. Hit up Graham Home on social media and his website, infinitygroupaustralia.com.au. Take care. Bye-bye now.